This topic is about the about the Cooper's Stagecate model, and my plan here is to to take you through a brief journey of how ideas in you know in companies or inside environments normally get developed. Because the big the big plan really is to say that if I've got many competing ideas, how do I know that the idea that I'm picking and that I'm going to fund is really the right idea? And how do I know that that, that idea will give me certain levels of return, whatever the, those returns are that I'm expecting from it? And I think that this is really the, the, the crucial thing behind a lot of what happens in, in, the, in, the, in the product innovation world, and that is that you, know, you, you never really know. I mean, you don't know. You, you, you take risk. So the more radical the idea is, the more risk you take, and the more well-known the idea is, and the more you're going to copy somebody or imitate, depending on which model you use, you, you have a very specific view that you normally will take on how you're going to put money into, into a new idea. So, so what I want to do is to, is to just shape the interplay between the stage gate and the funnel and, and, and show you how these two, these, these two come together. So, so they are essentially at a macro level. You know, normally four key areas that you have to worry about. And the first area is, wh where's your catchment area? And what is your catchment area? You know, where do you get these ideas from? So when the ideas come from, from, from universities, or it come from people in the market, or it come from your own people, or it come from research, whatever that is, you have to have a catchment area where you get these ideas into your, into your innovation approach. You know, let's just talk about it as an approach for now. The next thing is you want to make sure that once you get all these ideas into your approach, you want to make sure that you then pick the right kind of ideas. And once you pick the right kind of ideas, you need to want to make sure that you get the right one in place. So you want to do a business case of some sort, whatever that might be. And then you want to get into a pipeline of development. The pipeline of development is where you will allocate actual resources, and you'll fund it, and you'll then pick a course of action, and then execute on it. And the last stage is then when you want to then commercialize this particular idea, and you want to then reap the benefits. So let's take a, maybe an abstract example, like glass, or maybe not so abstract. So glass was a discovery. It was an idea. Somebody walked on a beach, saw the lightning 25,000 years ago, and said, oh, wow, this looks good. The thing is, though, that thousands of years later, we say, well, maybe we should control this process. Controlling the process means that I can have various forms of glass. How am I going to get this through my system? I then pick the right one. I'll stick that into a manufacturing plant. Some thousands of years later, we then say, well, hang on, maybe I can create plate glass as another idea. And all these ideas were essentially few ideas, very, very complex in its, in its, in its implementation initially. By the time the knowledge got developed, the knowledge became very simple as we moved through the industrial era. How we commercialize it is the fact that we took the raw material, we, we, we stick it through a physical plant, we produce the output. All of that essentially drove through an innovation system that then got the initial idea all the way through to, through to commercialization. So what I want to do is just give you the two, the two key constructs. So let's, just, so let's just talk about that. So the first thing is a stage gate really refers to the fact that I've got a stage within which certain bits of work will happen. That work will relate then to a key decision point, And that decision point will then say to me, yes, I continue or I don't. It will get me to the next stage and then get me to a next the next decision that I have to make. So in, in the Cooper's model that you see in your material, we'll talk about what each of these gates would mean. So what companies would normally do, they would look at the model and they will say that, I think that some of these gates might not apply to me. Maybe what I'll do, I'll fast track the early ideas all the way through to a decision that just says I've got an idea and build a business case before I develop and test it. Or what I could do is I could say, well, I'm going to add more gates because I want to manage the risk a lot closer. So another model that got developed by Wheelwright and Clark, not you know, sort of along the same lines, but during the 90s, where this was mostly used during the 80s to try to control this, 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 this big innovation thing, was the fact that the funnel really then plays out the four stages slightly differently. You've got the stage, catchment area, fuzzy front end, pipeline, and the success that you're going to get, hopefully, from the idea that you've then taken to market. Again, you have exactly the same kind of phenomena. So what you have is you have a series of gates within which you would have to pick the ideas that come in, a large number of ideas, large number in this case, we'll have to talk about it a bit later, but it could be 20, 100. In the thousands, it becomes difficult to manage, but let's, let's not uh, discuss it just yet. You'll pick a certain number of ideas, and you will then develop it all the way through to your view. The very last thing is the business case and the commercialization prospects, and then you'll then allocate the resources to get it to market and, and to launch it, launch it at the end. So really, both these kinds of views of how we manage the risk behind innovation is something that, 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 that the Cooper's model, all the Weirat and Clark models, all the related models are trying to figure out as to how do I reduce the risk of getting something to market. The key concept basically is this, is that how do I deal with the reductionist output that will take many ideas and select ideas? 
None of these models focus on or are really interested in developing new ideas. They're mostly interested in selecting what you've already got through your catchment area. So that means that the integration of these models into various parts of a, of a business normally becomes quite problematic. Because if you're going to have a particular stage gate model implemented and you want to make sure that you get business cases developed for hundreds of these ideas that are, that are inside your business, you must make sure that you've created, like we spoke in some of the other modules around the system of innovation inside your company, that can truly deal with these new ideas coming, coming, coming into your business. And you just have to make sure that you understand that both these have got to do with selecting the right idea, investing in the right idea, commercializing the idea at the right time.